The Health Minister Greg Hunt joins me now live from Canberra. Thanks for your time, Minister. Pleasure. How many Australians are fully vaccinated? That is, have had two doses of the COVID vaccine? Uh, at this point, we've had uh, about uh, 500,000 and that's out of a uh, vaccination population of 3.9 million. And the reason is very simple. Uh, the AstraZeneca vaccine is a 12-week period between first and second doses, and that's been the primary vaccine in Australia. And uh, as uh, one of your predecessors or one of the previous speakers, Mark Butler, said, uh, we follow the medical advice on that. So that's uh, similar to what's been in, uh, in place in the United Kingdom. That's allowed more people to be vaccinated earlier, but it's also the optimal dosing time uh, for the principal vaccine in Australia. That's 500,000 Australians who are fully vaccinated out of a population of 26 million. The US announced this week that they have got 50% of their population completely done. Australia's performance is underwhelming on any measure. Well, with great respect, um, today was a record day of 111,000 Australians who stepped forward to be vaccinated. Uh, 3.9 million, 3 million 906,000 Australians who've been vaccinated. Uh, Come I would on, Minister. Half a million in total. Let's nowhere near half the population like the no, US has, I, is it? I, I would respectfully um, make the point that to indicate that uh, a first vaccination is not a fundamental and critically important protection would be. Uh, I think a very unfortunate True, but if it was full vaccination, it'd be full vaccination, right? Uh, no, with, with great respect. What we see is that we have very significant protection from a first vaccination. Uh, the principal vaccine in Australia that's being used um, is the AstraZeneca vaccine. Uh, that works on a 12-week turnaround. The Pfizer vaccine uh, has a three-week second dose. Uh, approximately half a million Australians have uh, been vaccinated with that. And next week um, is the first week... Uh, after the AstraZeneca vaccine uh, reaches the second dosing point. So what you'll see from next week uh, is a progressive increase in the number of Australians to have second doses, entirely in line with the medical advice, entirely in line with the fact that the more Australians you can vaccinate earlier, the optimal outcome for Australians. And so um, Australians are stepping forward and I want to thank them. Uh, there were record numbers in each of the last three weeks. This week, uh, we've had two record days in a row. It's likely we'll have a record week, but we want to encourage more to come forward All right, Minister, for safe and effective vaccination. Let's talk about the protection of Australians in aged care. Let me read to you from a press release you issued on the 16th of February. It's anticipated the rollout to aged care facilities will take approximately six weeks, so by March the 30th. And then today we learn, only because of the COVID outbreak, but that, that there were this week 29 aged care facilities in Victoria that had not been vaccinated. Head's going to roll for that. Yours or the aged care minister, Richard Colbeck? Well, with great, uh, with great respect, uh, we have 98% uh, of uh, facilities around Australia in a program that is uh, protecting Australians. For example, uh, there was a, uh, a case amongst a contractor in the uh, TRICARE facility can on Mermaid Beach. Can you just address Beach. what the, I'm the talking to you about? Had all, been, had all been done. Minister, uh, we, we, we've established... So you've said 98%. So how many... In actual numbers, how many facilities does that mean around the country in Australia, aged care facilities, have not had vaccination yet in, in an actual uh, well, number? Uh, in Victoria, uh, we have nine to complete tomorrow. Victoria's actually what at about almost 99%. Uh, and around Australia... Prior to today, because we haven't had today's uh, figures come in, we had 74 still to go, but today there will have been significant still numbers. still to go. You said on the 16th of February that it would take six weeks. We know these are the most vulnerable people in the country based on the deaths data that we saw last year. How can 74 places not have been vaccinated yet? Well, with great respect, uh, we've had 98% around Australia, almost 99% in Victoria... Um, and in some cases, they had had uh, issues such as whether it's a gastro outbreak or they had the flu vac uh, vac vaccine. As you noted in your discussion with uh, Dr Chris Moy, um, given the epidemiological situation in Victoria, uh, the Chief Medical Officer, after consulting with the Australian Technical Advisory Group in Immunisation, has been able to uh, bring forward uh, the period for uh, in between the flu vaccine and the uh, doses which are now to be given uh, tomorrow. And so uh, by tomorrow, we expect that uh, 
all of those facilities, um, subject to uh, no incidents occurring, but all of those facilities in Victoria. So let if me read to you again. Let uh, me read quibbling you some about more. a 99 or a 98 percent. Oh, um, I'm not quibbling. I'm speaking so far, on behalf of the families and the residents of the 74 facilities that you've just revealed. Well, let me read to you from that same. Let me read to you from that same. within the city of Whittlesey, which is let the me, epicenter, and they've all yeah, had but as we know, not only first, first That's why and states second have doses. Their let me read to you from that same press release. This Minister for Senior Australians and Aged Care Services, Richard Colbeck, said the Australian government would be responsible for leading the implementation of the COVID-19 vaccine program in the aged care sector. So if COVID now rips through an unvaccinated aged care facility, that's on you or Minister Colbeck, right? Well, it's 99% completed, 100% tomorrow, 98% around who's Australia. But who's responsible if that happens? Well, this is absolutely the Australian government and uh, uh, the fact that we have achieved uh, across Australia uh, well over 300,000 vaccinations uh, in an incredibly difficult situation where care and attention needs to be given to each resident, uh, where there's an in-reach team that comes in, uh, where all of those elements have been uh, negotiated and achieved a... Um, 99% outcome in Victoria and 98% outcome around Australia, uh, with the others to uh, to be completed tomorrow okay. uh, before we, in Victoria, I think is uh, uh, an time. immensely important protection for Australians. And it is. That's what we're We've doing. We're before protecting we run out of Australians. Time, I, I let would me say ask this, you, Lee, Minister, you've in, a, made... in a world of, of 500, 600,000 cases a day, we've had 94 days of zero cases in Australia. So we know how to get through this. We'll get through it again. It is Minister, a very speaking difficult of getting time, through but we'll keep it, fighting what, to protect people. What we know that we need to get through this is quarantine. Every recent COVID outbreak we've seen has come from recently has come from an urban quarantine facility. None of them have come from the facility at Howard Springs. That isn't is it an isn't urban it, facility? Isn't it a no-brainer to increase capacity there or to build another like it? And we've done that. Um, yeah, so but the Howard increase Springs capacity, capacity further. Has been, uh, the Howard Springs capacity has been increased to 2,000, which is on all the medical advice, the maximum of its capability. Well, then what about uh, building another seeing... like it? Well, uh, how long would you expect that would take? Well, when are you going to make an announcement that you're doing that? But what we have to do is bring Australians home now and prepare for the medium term, uh, as was mentioned by Chris Moy. We're doing both of those things. We've already put in place Howard Springs, expanded that to 2000. It's an urban facility. Um, sometimes it's presented uh, by some as if it's not. It's not downtown um, I've Sydney I've been there on two occasions. Uh, I would be respectful to the people of Darwin with... Uh, the people of Darwin uh, know that they don't have the population size of Sydney or Melbourne, Minister. Well, we uh, met with the uh, people, Brendan Murphy and I, when we uh, were bringing uh, Australians home to Howard Springs in February of last year. They had just the same uh, concerns as people of Melbourne or Sydney. They have just the same rights as people of Melbourne or, uh, or Sydney. And there's also an Indigenous population, which is a vulnerable population. So uh, that facility, which has been Commonwealth run, has produced 100% protection, but the Northern Territory has now taken it over. Um, around the country, uh, what we see is that the states and territories have done an outstanding job uh, by any global comparison. That's what's protected us. That's our first line, but it's not our last line. And so this notion that there will never be a case from overseas, I think is one which we always have to test. We've done better than anybody else in keeping cases out. We've seen Singapore, Thailand, Taiwan, South Korea, Japan, outstanding countries that are all dealing with outbreaks in a global pandemic. We're keeping it out better than almost anybody else, but we're always fighting to do more. Minister. And so we're always looking to expand on those protections. We'll, we'll get Minister. through it. It's difficult days for Victoria, but we'll get through it. Minister, thank you for your time this evening. Thanks, Lee. 7.30, we'll be investigating the future of hotel quarantine. If you have a story to share, you can email us at 7.30 at abc.net.au. This week marks four years since Indigenous delegates from across Australia gave